My name is Tariq Khaled. I'd like to welcome to a program here at Sharjah Broadcasting Authority on hope. And today is the program we call it hope. And why we call it hope? Because we're wishing for every person, regardless of their particular conditions, that they themselves feel that there is a chance for them to change their lives. And those people who don't realize that they need to change their lives, that they're caught up in their particular lifestyles, that there's an alternative lifestyle for the person who chooses it. And today we're going to talk about fornication and adultery. And the people were warned historically. It is not new. This is not something in the 2023. No, people have been warned in past generations by the prophets who came before us. Why? Because this, what does it do? It destroys the inner fiber of our society, the structure of the families, the structure of the community. So you have now, for example, and you will see some programs like this where there are people who didn't know that they were brothers and sisters, as an example, and they wind up having affairs and relationships. Uh, and then there are people who did know their brothers and sisters, as an example, and they wind up having relationships. And then all the other kind of things that people are doing, wife swapping and all the other kinds of horrible acts that people are doing presently and have done. It is not necessarily new. But this is a disaster for society. It, it was a disaster in the past and a disaster today. To the point where in some societies they are openly admitting that 50% or more of the children that are born in their society are born out of wedlock. And some places, 70% of the people who are, are living without being married, man and a woman living together without being married. And of course, now we know we've gone into another dilemma, which we'll talk about later with men, uh, with men marrying men and women marrying women. But this is a separate category, which we'll discuss this later. This is a different thing. But right now, we're just talking about fornication and adultery, which we see has become prevalent. And the Prophet ﷺ, he actually mentioned this. Uh, in the last days, he said, more or less, there'll come a time where actually people will fornicate in public. And the religious person of that time will come and say, well, listen, why don't you just move, you know, out of the public view and go over here as a go, just get off the main road. He won't say anything to them about the, the act that they're committing. He would just say, no, it is, you know, why don't you just move off the road as an example. And unfortunately, we're seeing that in some places today, openly. And as a result, people don't care. So let's look at what's said in relationship to this. And Allah says in Surah Al-Isra, the Surah number 17, verse number 32. Do not commit near zina. Zina in, in, uh, in, is an Arabic word which basically relates to sexual activity between a man and a wife, which is not permissible. I'm sorry, a man and a woman, which is not permissible. A man with a woman who is not his wife. A woman who has a relationship with a man who is not her husband. For it is a shameful deed and an evil path. In the Surah Al-Furqan, this is Surah number 25, verse number 68 to 70. Surah al The servants of the merciful are among others, those who do not call upon any other God besides Allah, nor kill any person whom Allah has permitted killing, except in the course of justice, nor commit fornication or adultery, and whoever does that will incur guilt. The punishment will be doubled for him on the day of resurrection, and he will remain in it forever, disgraced, excepting the one who repents and believes and acts righteously. Now, when we talk about hope, what are we saying? This, these points are important. Accepting the one who repents and believes and acts righteously. 
So this gives us the steps for change. This is what we need to look at. Because some people say, oh, you know, you Muslims, you're too strict. Oh, brother, you're saying you should stone the people. You should uh, excommunicate the people. You should do so and so. Allah is giving us hope. And that hope is for anyone, regardless of who he is, where he is, and even what he's done. This, this is the thing we need to realize. Even if he's what he's done, if he does this sincerely before he dies. So look at these three things again. Repent. Repent. First thing, repent to Allah. Ask Allah for forgiveness for the sin. Admit that you have committed this sin and ask Allah for forgiveness. And the Prophet said more or less, I repent, I seek Allah's forgiveness at, at least a hundred times daily. And believes, meaning, what does belief mean? That I believe in Allah, I worship Allah, what we said from the very beginning, I worship Allah, I worship Allah only. And in this, what is the, what is the proof of the belief? The proof of the belief is to accept Islam and worship Allah and make the effort for change. What is the effort for change? to start to do righteous behavior. What is the beginning of this? The beginning of this is after I say I believe in Allah and I believe that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last and finest of the prophet, last and the final prophet of Allah. So the next thing is to establish the prayer. Establish the prayer. Now this becomes the system of reformation for the person who is truly sincere. And we've seen people like this. And we all know people who were in all kinds of situations. You don't want to get into the situations. In all kinds of situations that based on the knowledge that we have, if they had continued on this path, they would have gone to hellfire. And a law item, maybe some of them in hellfire now because they didn't follow these steps. And Allah knows best. We don't know. If they made change or they didn't make change, Allah knows best. So we're saying that a person can change. The hope is regardless of his condition, he can change. If a man, we're talking about this in particular, is a pimp or a womanizer, and unfortunately this is promoted too much, the playboy, and it's still being promoted the playboy. Look at him. He's very handsome. He's a very nice dresser. He has a lot of money. He's going with this woman. This is promoted in social media, in the movies, that this is an acceptable type of individual. This kind of behavior, this has status. Look at him. He's somebody. He's so important. All of the women want to be with him. And he is married to none. Or Maybe he's married to someone and he's still with all of the other women, which is forbidden, clearly forbidden, that the institution of marriage is established for the solidification of the community, of the nation, of the family. And when that doesn't happen, then we have chaos, as we're seeing today. So let's look at the result of this. In Surah An-Nur, this is Surah number 24, verse number 2, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, the male and the female who commit fornication, flog each one of them with 100 lashes, and do not let compassion for the two of them keep you from complying with Allah's religion. If you believe in Allah in the last day, and let a group of believers witness their punishment. Now some people, they say, oh brother, this is brutality. He said, what? This is not from us. This is a commandment from Allah. Allah is the one who created us. Allah knows us better than ourselves. Allah knows our condition. Allah knows the things that we will do tomorrow, as we see today. That if certain habits are not put in check, that mankind will continue on this path until he has himself become absorbed in this lifestyle, for lack of a better description. In Abu Hurairah, we're now reported, the Prophet saying, 
a zani, a fornicator or uh, adulterer. While committing zina is not a believer, a thief, while stealing is not a believer. When one drinks wine, he is not a believer. And one of you cheats, he is not a believer. Therefore, beware, beware. And it's collected by Bukhari and Muslim. So when a person is engaged in these acts, and this is, you know, we're talking about a Muslim now. We're talking about a Muslim. So a Muslim himself has to be very, very careful. If he's doing these acts, these acts are very clearly outside the guidelines of Islam. There's no question about that. It's outside the guidelines of Islam. So we have to be very, very careful because what we're seeing today, the promotion for this kind of behavior is openly displayed. And Ibn Masood, Rilano said that he asked the Prophet, what is the greatest sin in Allah's sight? He replied that you should treat anything as equal to Allah, whereas he created you. Ibn Masood said, true to that is great. What next? He replied that you kill your child for fear that he may eat along with you. And Ibn Masood Rilano said, what next? To which he replied that you should commit adultery with your neighbor's wife. And Ibn Masood continued, and Allah Most High has revealed words which verify this. Those who do not call upon any other God together with Allah, nor kill any person whom Allah has prohibited killing, except in the course of justice, nor commit zina, and whoever does that will incur guilt. The punishment will be double for him on the day of resurrection, and he will remain in it forever. Disgrace, except in the one who repents and believes and acts righteously. Again, this is uh, of Surah Al-Furqan, Surah number 25, verse number 68 8 to 70. And this was collected by Bukhari and Muslim. So we need to understand this, that a person, we need to understand the magnitude of this act. But at the same time, we shouldn't lose hope. A woman, she's a prostitute. She's gotten caught up. And we have this all over the world now uh, with the economic situation uh, where people, the woman, she's not married. Maybe a husband has died. She has children and she can't get a job. And now she begins to sell herself to take care of her children. This happens, and it's happened globally, and it's going on today. It doesn't mean that she can't turn, change, and maybe this woman is a religious person, but at the same time, she felt, she, weak, she weakened, and the influence of shaitan is there. So we cannot say, oh, this woman, she's an evil woman. She's doing something. She's been uh, put into a situation, and sometimes maybe she's been coerced, or she's been forced into a situation like this. Not that she likes it, but and she knows it's wrong, and she's asking and begging and crying always and asking the Lord to forgive her and trying to change. So we should say that as a believer, I should pray for a woman who is a believer who is in this condition. And if there is something that I can do to assist her to make this change, then I should do that. If there is a vehicle or an organization that's assisting women who are challenged in this way, that we should assist that organization in that because we don't want this kind of confusion, for lack of a better description, to become prevalent in our societies. And as a result of that, we've seen uh, many of the empires of the past that one of the descriptions that scholars say the downfall of many uh, past societies is when the culture became very promiscuous to the point where it became deviant in their behavior in relationship to male and female relations and began to get into other kinds of things which clearly outside the guidance of Allah that these people continued on these paths until they became self-destructive and they, permit, they permitted it and promoted it and then Allah destroyed them. So we today, we should be very careful. We should not be arrogant and think that we are better and above those people who came before us and never think that the same the punishment cannot come to us. That we are such good people that this will not happen to us. But we continue on this path. In a tradition uh, recorded by Bukhari, Imam Bukhari, on the authority of Samara bin Jundab, concerning the dream of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the angel Jibril and Mikael. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we went on and arrived near a pit which was like an oven out of which we could hear cries. This is the, when the Prophet ﷺ saw the heaven, saw the paradise, and saw the hell. 
We glanced into it and we saw naked men and women who cried out when the flames reached them from below. I asked, who are these, O Gabriel, O Gabriel? He replied, males and females who have committed fornication. Let's collect the Bible card. Bible to Allah. Subhanallah, and the Prophet said, said, Satan sends his troops across the earth with a promise that he, that the one who misleads a believer will be crowned with a crown. For the greatest mischief makers among them are the dearest to him. Then one of them comes back to him and says, I did not leave such and such until he divorced his wife. And Satan says, you did nothing. He will marry another. Another one approaches him and says, I did not leave such and such until he and his brother became enemies. Satan says, you did nothing. They will be reconciled. Then another one comes to him and says, I did not leave such and such until he commits zina. And Satan says, well done. Then he seats himself by his side and crowns him. So we need to look at this very seriously. And we look at our lives and we look at our families and we look at our societies in which we live. And we look at the time in, in, in terms of where we are today and what has become common and what has become permissible and how we have seen things change in our own generations. If we go to the generations of our grandparents and, and we talk to them, those who are still living, we ask them, what was the life like in your time compared to now? Has, have people regressed in this way? Have people lost the way? in terms of their belief systems, until those people say that they worship and believe in God, do they still believe in God or they stop believing in God? Or are they just sinners and they become uh, engaged and caught up in the things of the world? And those conclusions, each one of us have to do this and make these choices for ourselves, for the sake of our own souls. We need to be looking at what we're facing. And for the people who say, well, I don't believe in paradise. I don't believe in hellfire. I says, well, if you're willing to take a chance, it's up to you. You're, you're free to take a chance. I don't suggest you take a chance. And all of the, it's very interesting. We're in a society today where they gather all kinds of data. The data is against you. If we look at all the prophets who have come since the beginning of time to date, they have talked about this fornication and adultery. They have given rules and regulations of how society should formulate itself and obey, and obey the commands of Allah SWT. And their people clearly have been designated who have disobeyed and have been destroyed. So take the time out now to reflect on this. If you're self caught up in this fornication and adultery, take time out, reflect, repent, ask Allah for forgiveness, believe in the oneness of Allah. Three things we said. And then take the steps Re we say in right towards righteousness, the proper steps, R religiously, really want to make a positive change in your life. My name is Tara Khaled. I'd like to thank you for joining us here at Charter Broadcasting Authority. And hope, and hope is for those who wish to grasp it and wish to make changes in the way that will be most beneficial for them in this life and more important in the hereafter. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.